So, blessed assurance. This talk is called I Know, I Know. <laughs> <laughs> Because I hear that a lot. People call me up to tell me about their misery. And when I suggest to them what might be true, they say, I know, I know. <laughs> well, then why are you calling me? <laughs> if you didn't want to hear this, why are you calling me? I know, I know. I know I shouldn't feel this way. But you do feel this way. It's okay that you feel this way. But if you know, then know. Years ago, when I came into Unity, I was assured over and over again of my knowing that if God is wisdom itself, then I know. It is within me to know exactly what to think all the time. It is within me to know exactly what to say all the time. It is within me to know exactly what to do all the time in order to facilitate awakening. It is within me to know this. It doesn't mean I act on it seems to be the other things within me too. And sometimes I call upon those just to be right. Just to be unhappy. When I started my healing process a lot of years ago, and it was through by way of the 12 steps, I hung out with the people who wanted to know God better, but they wanted to know God in a big way, not a way to maintain their guilt. Because I found a lot of amateur preachers who wanted to preach about our guilt and wanted to preach about how we should be ashamed of ourselves and how, how this disease is always coming out to get us. Whatever that disease, we dis-ease we happen to be experiencing. And I thought, oh, I can't handle this. I'm not recovering just to stay miserable. I'm not going to go to meetings every day of my life just to be unhappy. There's got to be more to it. And then, I, I've told some of you about this before, there was this woman who was, uh, well, she was rather loosely balanced who would sit in the back of the room every in the smoking section every night and she would rant and rave about her life, her day at least. And she'd say, but I know God's will for me is to be happy, joyous, and free so I'm just going to keep coming back. And I thought, oh, God's will for me is to be happy, joyous, and free. I just learned this from a crazy woman in the back of the room. <laughs> and I was, uh, she was my teacher that day because I, that information made sense to me. See, that God's will for me is to be unhappy. That God's will is to punish me. That doesn't make sense. There's no logic in that. And it's like, wh why live if living isn't for joy? Why live if, if the purpose, if the function isn't to awaken to a higher realization? And since I was on a path of higher realization, because it was that or, or die for me. It was that I didn't want to want to die anymore. That makes sense. Mm -hmm. it, it's not that I was dying, but I, I was wanting to, and I, that's why I decided, okay, I'll, I'll go to those rooms with those damn people, and uh, the stupid alcoholics, <laughs> you know, and I will listen to them, and I'll get enough information, I don't have to go back and sit with these slobs, and, you know, and, and then one day I became one of those slobs that I really, and, and was grateful for it. So, grateful for it that I was one of many who were seeking a higher way. Now, I was also one of many who were fighting, <laughs> fighting what the higher way was offering because, you see, the higher way was going to take away our misery. The higher way was going to rob me of my pain and my suffering. And so, and, and I had tried this path back in the late 80s. And so when I came back in the 90s, anytime somebody tried to tell me something, I said, I know, I know. I was here before. You don't have to tell me. I was here for five months. You don't have to tell me. I don't care if you have 20 years. You don't have to. I know. I didn't know. I didn't know something that they knew, which is what it's like to be them after this amount of time. When I quit smoking, I realized the the great secret I was letting myself in on. This is when I got it, really got it. I said, about 17 years ago, I quit smoking. It was before that I quit drinking. But I, every day that I didn't smoke was a new day of discovering Sean without a cigarette. Because you see, I had been smoking since I was 11. And I'd been smoking heavily since I was 11. Because if you're going to do it, you might as well do it all the time. Uh, <laughs> and so I, I would 
But every day I thought, oh, I now know me for six days without a cigarette. And seven days. And eight days. And nine days. And I was, I was curious every day of what it would be like to find out the secret of what it's like to be me without masking who I am. Without putting a smoke screen around who I am. Because you see, I wanted to pray. I, I did turn religious. I mean, the 12 steps really did turn me rather religious in that way. But not religious so that I could worship God, but so that I could experience God. And all that God was. It wasn't so that I could forgive everybody. It's so that I could experience forgiveness. It wasn't so that I could be happy. It's so I could experience happiness. It wasn't so I could get a relationship, it's so I could experience a relationship. It wasn't so I could get stuff, it was so that I could experience stuff. To know what it's like to be me with a clear head, experiencing life on life's terms. Because you see, nobody told me I wasn't going to have life happen. Nobody told me, oh Sean, you pray and you won't, then life won't happen. No, they said, you pray this way and you'll know what to do when life happens. That's very different. And I, I met people who were trying to prevent life from happening. They didn't want to know about life. And that's why they had drank and smoked and took drugs and did all sorts of behaviors in order to prevent life from happening. And some people came into recovery to prevent life from happening. And they found, I ran into a guy one day in a subway. He had had about 14, 15 years when I knew him of sobriety. And he had, he was coming up on a year again. And he was a guy who sat in the back of the room, uh, and uh, and he, he, he tried to invite, and I had about five years at that point, he said, Sean, you get it? I quit, so stuff, certain stuff wouldn't happen, and it happened anyway. Do you get it? So I got it. Are you sure? I quit, so certain stuff wouldn't happen, then it went and happened, so I picked up, <clears throat> and I got it. And I said, I didn't quit to stop life from happening. I quit so I could live life. And I was told by a mentor of mine that if I applied these tools to my life, this is not a 12-step meeting, by the way, but if I apply <laughs> these tools to my life, <laughs> I, 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 I sneak in for, for that. If I apply these tools uh, of healing to my life, then I would know what to do. I wouldn't hurt myself anymore when life happened. So the next step for me was to come into unity because I wanted to take a deeper dip into God. <coughs> Somebody invited me. I was about I was four or five months off cigarettes and it was Easter time and I went in and somebody's screaming out a show tune and I thought, oh, well, I could go to this church. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, and they made me laugh. I laughed in this church. I laughed. But I, as I stuck around and I took classes uh, and, and, I, and I really studied it, I discovered there were still certain people in the room who wanted enough to, they didn't want to give up their misery. They, they were looking, still looking for masks to their misery. And you come into new thought and the first thing you hear, you can have a new car. You can have a relationship. You can have cash. You hear that when you first come into a New Thought Church a lot of times, not this one, but in other <laughs> ones, all the time, you can. You can, but it won't be right by saying the right incantation. It really won't be, or affirmation, we call them here. But, I, you know, when we're trying to use them to make something, to cast a spell, and somebody's <laughs> going to give me something good, without having the consciousness to manifest Today is based on the law, the universal law of believing and knowing. Believing and knowing, and that's why I called the talk, I know, I know. <laughs> if I knew, I'd be doing. I only know about a lot of times. I know about a lot of stuff. I know about truth, and I know about so many things. But I only know through my experience. So in the Bible, when you read, they say about Jesus, he, he taught us one having authority. Well, where's that authority come from? Except his experience. So over the years, I've had lots of experience at manifestation. Lots and lots of experience at manifestation. Because you see, my problems became less important to me than my solutions. 
It wasn't my solutions, it was the solutions. I didn't desire my problems nearly as much. I won't tell you I didn't desire them at all. I still desire them. Some, how do I know I still have some? I wouldn't have any problems if I didn't desire problems. I wouldn't have any upset if I didn't desire upset. And let's be clear on that. I have what I want. I have everything that I want. If I claim I want it differently, then I'm going to have to think differently to experience it. God's not going to interfere with my consciousness in order for me to manifest a pile of cash unless I have the consciousness to manifest a pile of cash. God is not going to interfere with my consciousness in order to give me a harmonious relationship when I am insistent on maintaining a disharmonious consciousness for a disharmonious relationship. God is not going to interfere. That is the divine love that is. If I want to live in harmony, if I want to live in abundant wealth, which is wealth of thought, wealth of body, wealth, wealth uh, you know, in our exchange, in our trade, wealth, 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 if I want to live in that abundance, then I've got to develop the consciousness to do it. No one is going to force that consciousness on me. But when I was taught that, when I came in the doors of unity, I was so relieved because it meant I didn't have to wait for my mother to catch up so she could give it to me. You know, I didn't have to somehow get it, get those people from my childhood to change. I could go ahead and claim it now. And by claiming it now, I would begin to see this differently. I would begin to see my past differently. I'd see all those kids and adults of my youth differently. And that would become my wealth. My past would become my wealth. How about that? Wouldn't you like to have a wealthy past that is prospering you in the present? Even the past of five minutes ago, ten minutes ago. Wouldn't you like to have that as your wealth of right now? So that suddenly you have divine ideas. We were talking in the class back there today about this morning about that a good idea is going to come through into manifestation. Now, some of you may say, that was my idea. Yeah, but you didn't do the work to bring it about. They were willing to let it come all the way through them. You want the idea to come through you, then you have to enlist the aid of the universe to help you for the part you don't know. You don't have to figure it out. You just have to say, it is figured out. This is an idea I would like to experience. When David and I were getting our house, I, we didn't know how we were going to pay for it. And one day I sat in that back room and I said, I am willing to experience this house. And then I said, I didn't know to say this. It just came to me. I said, am I? Am I really? And I looked for any place of resistance in my body. Any arguments to why I, we couldn't have it. And I couldn't find it. And so I said, I guess I am. So I called him up on the phone. I told him the story. I said, so are you? Are you willing to experience? It's not have the house. It's like, believe me, anybody who has a house knows you experience a house. <laughs> <laughs> the house does not just happen to you. You have experiences. You have property. There are experiences. And if you have property with a river in the backyard, you have some other experiences. And, and so he, he said, yes. I said, are you? Look for any resistance. And he said, I can't find any, find any. And I said, then it's ours. We don't know how. And we began to pray for the prosperity of the people who were selling it. We began to affirm. Because we realized right up front, we can't hope that they don't prosper in order for us to, to prosper. That does, that's not logical, is it? No. We cannot hope that the universe lives in lack anywhere so that I can live well. There are, there are better ways than that limited thought. So we were willing, and I said, fine. The women who were selling the house, maybe they'll come into a pile of cash and say, let's just give it to the guys for what they, they offered. <laughs> or our income could go up. And we found the money in, the, in a way we so did not expect and drove, David had to drive miles out of his way to suddenly hear the information of how we could have this house. And it's not the house, it was the experience, the whole experience. And I mean, and that started at the last week of September and we owned it by the first week of December. And, and it, it was 
so many thoughts. And I remember one day we were there with an inspector, and it had rained for seven days. And I was just sitting in one of their chairs. And when it rains and gets gray for a long time, I, I get a little gray for, after a while. And I was just sitting very quiet. And David said, what's wrong? He said, nothing's wrong. He said, is the house not ours? <laughs> and I had to think on that. And I said, yes, it is ours. But we can still change our mind. We can still decide not to buy it. But it's ours if we want it. Well, that's the same thing with your life. Your life is yours if you want it. And your life lived well is yours if you want it. But life is an experience. Are you willing to experience your life and experience it for the lush riches that it has to offer? And you got to go within. If you say yes, then you have to say, am I? Or is there still a grievance over here that I haven't, that isn't settled, and I, I'm not ready to, I'm not willing to settle it? I pray almost daily about any absence of forgiveness that I experience, and my prayer is, I am willing to experience forgiveness with this individual. I am willing to experience forgiveness with this individual, because I've learned that experience, uh, that the forgiveness experience. It kind of just happens when it, when it finally happens. Mm -hmm. But it's not because I say I forgive you. It's because I have done the spiritual work necessary to suddenly no longer be attached to that definition of my past. I've witnessed it repeatedly in my life. And it has taken years for some individuals before I've suddenly seen them in a new light or seen the event. It's not them. It's the event that I feel took place between us. That's what I see suddenly. It's like, oh, wow. And so it tells me, I know. I know. It is within me to know. Now, in this book, it's called The Metaphysical Bible by Renford. Let's read the very beginning of this chapter on the universal law of believing and knowing. And it says, the law of believing and knowing states, when we are able, with undivided thought, full focus, will, and the knowledge that what we want is already created in thought, we create or manifest in the material realm. Believing and knowing are two sides of the same coin. One could have all the faith in the world, but if that faith is blindly misplaced, it is useless. One can know everything, but if there is no faith, the knowledge cannot be activated. Years ago, I was in a meditation, and someone said to the facilitator, uh, I know fear is the opposite of faith. And she said, oh no, fear is faith. It's faith in what you're afraid of. And so if you are activating your faith and directing it in what you are afraid of, then what is the logical conclusion of what you're likely to experience? But if you decide, because you are the master of your experiences, in case you didn't know, you are the master of every one of your, you are not slave to any one of your experiences. If you decide, reality is not frightening. And so the logical conclusion must be, what is frightening must not be real. What is frightening must not be real. That doesn't mean you won't experience fear, but you'll know the truth about it. And you'll know what to think then to dispel the fear. You'll begin to have thoughts of love. Love, the word, just the word love alone dispels fear. It can wipe it right out of the room. That's why I walk around my house and I say, only love lives here. Only love lives here. Only love lives here. Only love lives here. Sometimes I walk around the church and I walk into every room and declare, only love lives here. Only love lives here. Especially if I'm having thoughts that are trying to confuse me of my true nature. Only love lives here. I'll say to my body, only love lives in my body. Only love lives in my body. Because otherwise, I'm having thoughts that are telling me that, that aren't the truth. I'm having thoughts that are telling me I'm stupid or I'm unattractive or I'm this or I'm sick or I'm poor or something. You know, I, it's, if I'm having arguments in the car with people who aren't there, and I, and, I, and, I de and I have to declare, I don't want to be right about this. 
I have to ask him, Sean, do you want to be right about this? Do you want to be right about this? The Jesus Christ teachings are all teachings to set us free, to remind us of the health that is in us, the wealth that is in us, the possibility, the divine potential. And so rather than saying, I know, I know, and then not activating your faith, in the direction of what you do know, you do, I know, I know. It's a whole different attitude. I know exactly what to think right now. And you may not get the words, but you know you know. And you begin to give yourself credit for knowing because that God essence is in every one of us. The law of believing and knowing means I have to use them. All the universal laws must mean I have to activate them into my conscious mind from my super conscious mind, my Christ mind, whichever, however you want to call it. It's the same thing. It is the highest knowing. But activate it. Activate it all the time into living the life you want to know. I so enjoy having the memories of my early days of trying this stuff out, proving it right. I really enjoy it because... Along the way, there are days I forget. There are days, you know, you spend some time around here, and you think you know, and you forget to act. You forget to be in the being. Oh, I know all that. Yeah, and? Are you, are you manifesting today? Are you happy today? Are you busy having a long-term argument in your head? Are you busy being guilty for the mess? Are you busy thinking of what you wish you had done instead of what's possible right now? What is possible right now? Those of you who are afraid to throw stuff away, get rid of one thing. You don't have to get rid of everything. Those of you who are afraid of making peace with an individual for fear they'll be right, start to make peace in your mind. Ask yourself, does God have the same grievance I have? Is God mad at my neighbor the way I am? Does God see me or the neighbor the way I'm seeing the neighbor and the way I'm afraid the neighbor sees me? Does God see me the way I see me? The logical conclusion is no. God is not a person who sees. God is divine spirit. God is divine mind. God is what is. Grievances aren't what is. Hatred isn't what is. Lack and guilt and humiliation isn't what is. Peace is what is. Joy is what is. And so, in our blessed assurance today, our blessed assurance, because faith is the assurance of that which is hoped for and the conviction of that which is not yet seen, let's focus on our assurance and let's focus on our conviction of why we come up these stairs. Because it is possible, just possible, that you and I are good all the time. Mm -hmm. <laughs>